Hello and welcome to a bit of a stunning afternoon here in beautiful Nova Scotia. Welcome to my channel, The Optimistic Gardener. My name is Steve Farley. Well, I'm in, uh, I'm in the orchard this afternoon. Grandly titled The Orchard. Um, it's basically, what have I got in here now? Four, four apple trees, um, normal apple trees, and a couple of uh, step over apple trees, as you can see. One, two, little one over there. One died on that side. And I've got one Sweet 16, a beautiful one over there. And a couple of step overs, as you can see there. So it's mid-March. Still, everything is, um, is mostly dormant here in, in Nova Scotia. Well, I think we're due 10, 10 centimetres of uh, snow on Friday. But now is a good time to be pruning uh, my apple trees. They're still dormant, so any cuts I make won't be subjected to... Um, uh, the sap hasn't risen, so any cuts I make won't be subject to uh, any um, diseases or damp and stuff that's uh, you know around in the summer. Um, so it's you know it's a, it's a perfect time to be pruning my apples, get them ready for hopefully a bumper harvest this year. I'll say a bumper harvest. I've actually only had I think they're only I think well, could be about four years old this apple tree now. Um, and I've only, the one behind there, Sweet 16, I had a bumper harvest of that last year and they were absolutely beautiful apples. But the other um, trees, that one hasn't even flowered yet. That one flowered and I had a couple of apples on it. So the apples flower from spurs that form along the actual branches and we'll have a look at that uh, later because that's where we want to sort of do our pruning to to encourage lots of spurs and the spurs that are there to make sure that they've got maximum sunlight to help produce the flowers and then the the apples after that so we've got different uh, there's a couple of different types of um apple trees here um the the way that they're grown we've got this one here which is more of your sort of open center type one whereas basically we're trying to produce branches all around on the outside of the of the actual tree and and a nice open center so that we get a nice bit of airflow and light in that in that center bit and then you've got this type what's called a central leader type apple tree where about sort of knee high down here we have a set of branches that are formed and then we'll have a, a bit of a space a couple of feet space until another set of branches formed and then you'll have a central leader branch here going up and then every couple of feet you'll have sets of branches coming out so that you have nice space in between these branches and then again you're trying to form nice open sort of lateral branches coming out every couple of feet and nothing much in the middle other than the leader here. So let's have a look how we're going to um, prune them. As I mentioned, fruit is produced on spurs that are formed along the branches, like so. As you can see, this little spur here and one here, and this will produce the flowers. And on this side here, we've got spur there, there, and there. And another one there. So all along here, we've got the spurs forming. So obviously we don't want to cut back any of the spurs or, or chop them off. We want to try and encourage them as much as is possible. What I want to try and do, um, and you know, each tree, each person is sort of really going to, you can um, prune it how you want, but there are certain principles that we're going to try and adhere to. Um, on this one here, like this open centre, I want to encourage, you know, I want it to be a nice open centre. So I'm going to be trying to remove, as a rule, any of these sort of branches that are going inwards into the centre of the plant. Um, and then we're going to use the, the usual three Ds, um, removing any diseased, damaged or dead branches. Um, and any potential ones that are crossing. So as you can see here, we've got uh, this crossing here. So that's what I'm going to start with first of all. First of all, three Ds, um, disease, damaged or uh, dead. And I'll have a little look for that. There's a sort of damaged one straight away. You want to make sure your 
pruning shears, your uh, secateurs, are nice and sharp. Um, I also use a pruning saw. You can use the loppers, but I would sort of uh, sort of caution against it because they are often um, crush your branch and, and that can um, cause damage and introduce disease later on. So, first of all, like I said, oh, and the other thing, you don't want to overstress the plant. So um, you can give it a good haircut, but I wouldn't go any more than a third of the plant. I wouldn't take any more than a third of the actual tree away. Um, you know, so a branch here, don't cut more than a third back. But we want to keep it nice and neat. So that's what I'm going to start now. So I'm going to start with that diseased one I saw over there. And I want to cut back to a, just above a bud. And like I said, I'm going to cut this about a third back, uh, just above a bud. And you want an outward facing bud as well, again, because obviously you want to encourage our branches to go outwards. So there's one there. This one's got a bit of a nick as well. So a lot of the ends of these have actually got a bit of a uh, got a bit of damage. Again, outward facing bud, just above. This one here, I want to cut these back about there, I think. Central one. Right, so I can't see any much more in the way of damaged ones, but so now I'm going to go for anything I see that's crossing on the inside, or anything that's crossing either way, really. And um, when we're cutting, if you want, if you're going to cut near the actual branch, you want to cut back as flush as possible, so that once it's healed, you probably don't notice it at all. But anything going on the inside. I'm going to cut right back. Here again, we've got one coming on the inside, so we don't want that one. Let's get rid of that. Long one on the inside here. That's probably going to end up rubbing against that. So let's cut that one back there. This one going down. We don't want them going downwards. So let's get rid of that one. Another crossing one here. Uh, I prefer the outwards facing one. So I'm going to cut this one off. Cut that flush. These tall ones, I want to cut them back a fair bit. They're quite spindly at the moment and I don't want any fruit coming and sort of pulling the tree down. So let's uh, cut this back to a bit more stronger wood. Here's an outside one there. That one. Let's get that going. I'm going to pull that quite a bit back. These inside ones, get rid of them. Bit of, a, bit of a dead one there. Spindly one. So we want a nice bit of airflow going around here. You can see it's nice and open centred now. I think what's the saying? If you can, if a pigeon can fly through, no worries. Then you got it right. So I reckon a pigeon can fly through that way and that way without snagging himself too badly. This one here, yeah, don't like that one. So I think 
that is just the ticket. Now, with the other ones, it's really just the same, whether it's the, you know, the leader or the, um, or this open center, just cutting it back a third in places where you want to, um, anything going inside, don't want anything like that. And uh, there we go. Hopefully this should help me produce some, some nice healthy f fruit this year and set itself up to, to, to grow nice and strongly. It's pretty simple really. Three Ds, dead, damaged, diseased, and then a nice open center and then try and cut your branches right just above a bud and to an outward facing bud. And then cut anything that's going on the inside. Jobs are good.